listening and, and joining us here. Um, I know all of our student athletes are uh, very grateful to have you and happy Veterans Day. Uh, we have a lot of uh, student veterans at USM and um, even some student veterans who are also student athletes. So it's really cool to see that, uh, that crossover and be able to honor um, some, of those, some of those traits and those folks uh, today and happy to have you here. Great. Thank you, we're happy to be here. Thank you, Sam. Yes, we certainly show our gratitude to all who have served and who are serving on this day. Great. Well, welcome everybody. I'm Michelle Drucker and I am a career advisor and instructor at USM and my, in my career advisor role, um, I'm with the USM Career and Employment Hub and my co-facilitator today is, I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm Jill Williams. I'm an employer relationship manager and I also partner in the Career and Employment Hub and work alongside Michelle on supporting students as well as engaging with employers to help facilitate job opportunities and internship opportunities for all of our USM students. Welcome and thank you for coming. Thanks, Jill. So for today, um, we are going to be showing a lot of PowerPoints because there's a lot of content in what we're sharing. Those will be available to you later. Um, we will share those with Sam and she'll be able to have those available, all of the slides. Also, we're going to lean into the chat function. Um, we already have 27 people on the call. There may be more joining. So it gets a little more challenging to have, to try and, and follow everybody's video. Uh, so we're going to encourage you to use the chat if you have any questions, if you have any comments, can't hear us, um, please use the chat. And uh, there, if, you, if that's not working for you and, you and you need to just speak up, please do that as well. Um, we usually like to have these be as interactive as possible. And as you know, on Zoom, we're a little more limited, but the chat gives us that great opportunity. So without further ado, I am going to start our presentation for today. All right. So we already introduced ourselves. The objectives today are to hopefully um, have the participants leaving with an understanding of the definition of and how to network, be able to create an elevator pitch, have the skills to create an effective LinkedIn profile, which is really important in today's world, and learn how to begin a strategic job and internship search. And then finally, we're just going to review for those of you who were here last time, it will be a review who we are and how to reach us within the Career and Employment Hub. From last time, again, for those of you who were with us, um, you'll see this slide on the career competencies. We spent more time last time. Just want to show this, it's important. So in addition to the awesome degree that you will have when you are done with your education here at USM, employers are looking for specific competencies. And these are the competencies that have been identified by the National Association of Colleges and Employers that students should also have in addition to a degree. So this will be in your PowerPoint, but sometimes you've heard them called professional skills, soft skills, and you wanna be aware of these two in your journey. And another slide that's more of a review from last time and is really pertinent for all of you are student athlete transferable skills. We talk a lot about transferable skills at the Career Hub, and there are some that are specific to student athletes that are really important for you to be aware of as you build your story, whether it's in an interview, on a resume, in an elevator pitch, which we will be talking about soon. You wanna be able to tell your story. And these are some of the skills that student athletes often build at a higher rate than other students because of your, your dual role and your dual commitment. 
Um, and Sam, I, I meant to ask you earlier, if you would also help monitor the chat, that would be fabulous. Um, just because Jill and I are talking and we may not be as on top of it. So we'd love to leverage your support. Of course, you got it. Thank you. Um, so before we get into the content of today, starting with building your network, are there any questions at all around the transferable skills? Either you were here last time and you have a question or you have a question now. Okay. I don't know if we have hands up. Let me just, can't seeing, usually see them. Yeah, seeing none. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start off by, or we're going to start off by a poll that we'd love to get your input on. We are looking to find out the percentage, wait, Michelle's got to launch the poll. And I don't know if you shared that, Michelle, so we can see the percentage of people, the number or the percentage of people that you find jobs through networking rather than more traditional opportunities. So I'd love to get your feedback or thoughts on this. What do you think the percentage is of how you would be able to find a job through networking rather than the more traditional job postings or if you went and looked at a newspaper, what do you think the thoughts are on that? So we'll give you a minute to launch this poll and see what happens. Should we sing? Do, do, do. Oh, this is a tribute to Alex Trebek. Do, 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 do. All right, just, to, oh, almost everybody's voted. We give it about one more, come on, one more. And while we're doing this, just so you guys know, as Michelle said earlier, please don't hesitate as I'm speaking or as she's speaking. If there is something you want us to stop and you, it doesn't get into the chat, please don't hesitate to interrupt us. We definitely want this interactive. There is a lot of information we're sharing, but we want to make sure that if you have a question, you're getting it answered. All right. Everybody responded, I think. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, Here almost. we go. So I'm ending the poll. All right. Ready? Here we go. Oh, good thoughts. 8% said 25, 4, 45, 67% of you said 65%. And the answer is 85% of jobs are found through networking. So those of you that got 85%, give yourself a round of applause, pat yourself on the back. Congratulations. Good job. So as you can see, Building your network and connecting with people is really, really important. So what's networking? It's really thinking about how do you ask questions? How do you be yourself? Listen actively to people around you. Follow up with people. Be a giver. One of the things that Michelle and I were talking about that I think is super impressive with what you do as student athletes, networking among other teams, other players. When you meet somebody that you're getting involved with and you're supporting on another sporting event, that's all networking. If you're having a chat with somebody in a grocery store, if you're just having a conversation, anywhere that you're out, being yourself, asking questions and interacting is an opportunity to network. Again, there's 85% of people find jobs through networking, not through job posting. So you're building connections and you have that opportunity to interact. Anytime that you're speaking with a college professor, present yourself professionally. This is really important when you think about how you want to be able to put yourself out there. Even when you think about the things that are going on currently and most of what we're doing is in Zoom, thinking about your background. What are you looking when you have yourself up and ready? Like Michelle and I asked at the beginning, when you're involved in this kind of a presentation, can you put yourself video on so that we can see who you are and have an opportunity to connect with you? That's really important to us. So think about how your appearance is, your presence speaks volumes, be memorable. If you're going to an event which isn't happening right now, we encourage you at some point that you might want to consider creating a business card so that you have that information in front of you so you can leave something when you're able to meet with someone if you're going to an event like an eggs and issues or you're getting out in the community and you're doing something that is visually in front of someone and i know it's not happening right now having your business card or able to be able to present something to someone is important so they know how to get in touch with you 
Again, we talk about considering your virtual environment, having that opportunity to be able to just think about what is my background looking like? We feel really strongly when you go to a job fair, you're going to something where you're presenting or you're just being a participant, have a virtual background. If you can't do something like what Michelle and I have, think about just being against a white wall. I see a lot of you from what I can see on my screen right now, have something just solid behind you. Think about that. We've had some, as we've said in other presentations, we've had some disconnects where people have had backgrounds that have not been appropriate. Just think about your professional appearance. Having useful opening comments, questions, things that you wanna be able to grab somebody to think about your interest, that's really important as well. And so being able to have that and how do you wanna present yourself? What's the pitch that you wanna be able to give to somebody is really key when you're thinking about building your network and making those connections. And what are good networking opportunities for you to get engaged in? Where should you go? What should you be involved in that will help facilitate networking and being engaged with people so that you can help build your connections? Right, so think about that. I think, right. So if, if you would all throw some ideas into the chat, we wanna get you engaged on this. What are, where do you think might be good networking opportunities for you based on what Jill has shared on what networking is? Aha, job fair. We love to see that one. <clears throat> Other thoughts? What happens when you, I can't see the chat. I could just see the job fair, so thank you. Camps, clinics, absolutely. Oh, excellent. What else? Think outside, think of whatever comes to mind. Friends, family members, fantastic. Clubs, sport activities, absolutely. As I said, when you think about something like going to another, and again, I know you're not going physically to sporting events right now, but when you think about going out and meeting another team and you make a connection to that team or that coach, and all of a sudden you decide that you want to get involved in some particular field and you remember meeting a student, another athlete that was involved in that field, you might reach out to them and say, I'm interested in that. Could you tell me a little bit more about it? And as you build your LinkedIn profile, the next thing you know, you've linked in with that person and then you're expanding your network. Great. So I wanna talk a little bit about networking opportunities thinking about starting with who is within your network that you already know. And you guys threw some of this out there. Contacts you've had with volunteer work, some societies or clubs you belong to, coaches, opponents, faculty. Faculty are great resources for networking abilities and opportunities. Think about who they know and they could help introduce you to somebody to help expand your network. Attending events like you spoke about, employer presentations, conferences, Right now, there's some really neat things that we're doing where you can go on some Zoom trainings. And I think that is an opportunity for you to make even more connections when you're involved in some of these. Where I have done it, where I've gone to a Zoom or we've gone to an HR training or we've done some kind of training and I was impressed with the presenter. I then have gone from that presenter and asked to link in with them or make a connection just because I'm interested in their background. And then they know other people to help support that connections. Things you do from work, any internship class that you've taken, excuse me, any internship you've done and any class that you've taken. I think those are great ways for you to network as well. And Jill, if I may, um, we put opponents in there. So I have a son who was a four-year student athlete right. in college, just like you all are. And it was interesting because other coaches and other players, you get to know them and they get to know your personality, right? How you perform on the field, on the court, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes those are really good connections for you. Some of the assistant coaches, they're doing this as a part-time gig. They may be in an industry that you're interested in. So even, even your opponents can be great opportunities for you as student athletes. Um, quick point on that. Similarly, if you are acting poorly as an opponent to somebody else, that can also hinder a job opportunity. We had that happen 
um, actually here when um, we were interviewing. We decided not to go with a candidate based on um, interactions that they'd had with USM. So something to consider. And Sam, I want to kind of go off of that for a minute. And I think this is really important. And Michelle will talk more about this as we talk about LinkedIn. But when, not to make you nervous, but when you think about networking, how you present yourself both in person and now with the virtual world, how you're presenting yourself on whether you have Facebook or Instagram or any of these other things, it's important to think about that because people do some of that research prior to making connections from employment opportunities. And that's important to think about how you are presenting yourself as you're looking to want to expand your networking. Sure. And a lot of our student athletes that are on this call have actually um, had a discussion with that with our uh, communications person, uh, Christina Krakalici. So yeah. they are pretty much all very well versed in that. But yes, ex excellent point. Yeah, that's really important. So I want to talk a little bit about expanding your network. And again, you all said some of this about attending events. And when you're thinking about whoever you're connecting with and you're attending these events and who the employers are that are presenting, make sure that you're asking if you can connect with them to build that network. And almost everyone wants to have that network and they want to connect with you. I don't know a single employer that has ever said to me, oh, student X reached out to me and I said, no, thank you. I don't want to talk to them. So make sure that you think about how you can reach out and expand that. There are lots of things that you can do about attending events like things that the Chamber of Commerce puts on, eggs and issues. When we're back and we're able to do these physically, but right now all of these events are happening virtually and they are all free for students to attend. So anything that the Portland Chamber of Commerce is putting on, they have things called kegs and issues, which happens after the school day and the work day. They have Propel, which is for the younger population to come in and get involved in. Lots of different things that you can do. Connecting with us at the Career Hub so that we can help support navigating you and helping expanding your network. Thinking about alumni. I think it's super important when you are reaching out to somebody who's an alum. Let's say you're interested in a particular field. You can do a search on LinkedIn, which again, we'll talk about where you can actually say, I want to be able to connect with somebody who's an alum, a student athlete that graduated, that's an engineer that I would like to be able to talk to. Great way to make a connection. Academics, same type of thing. Speak to your college professors, speak to people that are teaching, that are staff that can help support you in making more networking connections. And then asking other people. One of the things that I've always felt rule of trade, if you are going to an interview, whether it's an informational interview or you just want to have a conversation and you're making a connection, try not to leave from speaking with that person until you have one or two other contacts that you can connect with as a result. So that's kind of exciting. And then professional associations, student memberships. I know that there's, for example, I help support for the engineering group. There's an engineering student committee. We really encourage you to get involved in these kind of things so that you can expand your network. And then obviously we have online networking and we're going to talk a lot about the LinkedIn. Questions, thoughts, comments on any of those? That was a lot of information. Great. So skills leveraged in networking. And this is really how you can up your game is to really think about when you are going to meet with someone and you are going to connect with somebody to network, think about how you can get, how you can have some kind of commonality with that person so that you can help open up the conversation. Really think about relevant questions. What are effective questions that you can ask that will help make that person think that you're engaged and, and interested in what you're trying to do in making a connection with them? Good communication skills, both conversationally as well as written. And again, thinking about your, your rapport building and your interpersonal skills and always, always, always send a follow-up note, whether that's through an, an email, through a LinkedIn, really trying to look at a demonstration of genuine interest in the people that you're connecting with. So one of the things I was telling Michelle that I feel really strongly about when you are going into any kind of a networking situation, whether it's an interview or just a conversational meeting, is find something about that person or about the room you're in or about the connection you're making that will make a difference in the conversation. 
I went into a meeting with a company at one point, and I, this was back when we could go physically. And I walked into the office, and this person who I was meeting with happened to be a CEO of a company, had on his, his table was a huge map of the state of Maine, and he was a very big kayaker. And there was all these paths on this map, and I didn't understand what it represented. So I made a point of sort of starting the conversation by asking to kind of make this connection. And we ended up spending over an hour just talking about his passion on kayaking. And it gave us a chance to get comfortable and networking and really deepening that kind of rapport so we could then grow from there. And as a result, he gave me other people to connect with. And it was just a calming way to make sure that we felt like we could build on this networking. So again, and we've talked about this as well, when you think about how you're looking um, in Zoom meetings, think about your body language, your expressions. Are you looking when you're in a meeting? Are you coming across engaged? Are you smiling? Are you just making sure that you feel like you're really leveraging the networking skills that you're trying to be able to build. Michelle, anything you want to add to any of that? I do. Uh, we have a note where it says send a follow up note on the slide. They go a long way. And with networking, you can kind of get um, a big bang for your buck, so to speak by sending a thank you note and also at the same time asking them to connect on LinkedIn. And we'll, we'll get into more details there, but LinkedIn then provides you with their network if they accept your invitation. Okay. So it's sort of this gift that keeps on giving, but the follow-up note is really important. If someone's taken time out of their day to meet with you, it's really important to say, thank you. I get that you're a busy person and I appreciate you prioritizing this. Thank you. That's a good point. Really great point. Sam, did you have anything that you wanted to add to this? The skills? No, these are great. Spot on. Great. Now Jill's going to introduce something fun. Yay! Participatory. Here we go. So we're going to create an elevator pitch. This is, um, and you can read this comic, I've got an elevator pitch, an escalator pitch, and just to be safe, a stairway pitch. An elevator pitch, which we think is really important for all of you to kind of think about. How many of you, just a quick, I don't know, show of hands that I can see it, even know what an elevator pitch is? Anyone hear the term before? No. So an elevator pitch is literally the terminology is you step onto an elevator and the person standing next to you says, hi. They may say, I'm a recruiter at your dream company, or they may just say, hey, hi, I work for company X. I'd love for you to tell me a little bit about yourself. And you have to ask yourself, are you prepared for an opportunity like this? Can you, in 30 seconds or less, two minutes or less, because literally the concept is you're riding up and down the elevator, so you only have a very short period of time to show, to really say your pitch. Can you introduce yourself? Can you talk about your background? Can you think about your career aspirations? in a quick elevator ride. And it's very interesting to see, and I know for Michelle and I, in our career paths, we kind of have it down to a science. So when you go to an event, you shake someone's hand, you literally have that 30 seconds to quickly say what it is you do and why you're here and what you're trying to obtain from it. So what you're trying to do is who you are, introduce yourself, share your name, offer some content about what school you might attend, what your academic program is, where you might currently work, Something about you that's going to say, this is what makes me a little different. Or just if you, like Michelle and I did our quick introduction, who we are with our title, that could be something else too. What makes you unique? Mention qualities that you have. I think this is where our transferable skills come in, thinking about that as a student athlete. What is unique to the employer? And think about your relevant accomplishments. If you were the team captain, that might be something you want to get into that pitch real quickly. And then what are your goals? Let the employers know what you're looking for. I'm coming to this event because I'm really interested in looking for internship opportunities with your company and I'd really like to learn more. And then think about a passion and maybe your enthusiasm. And if it's, I wanna know more about internships because I'm really into sustainability and your company is very much into that, I'd love to learn more. It's quick, it's fast. And then here's a couple sample elevator pitches. We're gonna give you a second to just read through those so that you can hear these are again, seconds. You could time yourself just saying them out loud. So give you a minute to read those.
So now we would love to provide you an opportunity. We're going to give you two to three minutes is what we decided, Michelle, to really create your own elevator pitch. Think about who you are, what makes you unique, what are your goals, and then use those components to fill in the blanks. And it doesn't have to be these words exactly. Come up with your own. And when we finish with this, we are going to ask for some wonderful, brave volunteers to be able to share their three to five minute, excuse me, their one to two minute elevator pitch, or not even, it'll be probably 30 seconds. And we encourage any of you who are coaches, staff, anyone to really think about volunteering for that. So we're going to give you a couple minutes. We're going to stop our recording and then we'll come back in at the end and share. 